Americans love their cars. Frequently, it's their most prized possession and generally the most expensive item they own besides their house. People treat their autos with loving care and it's usually with a bit of concern that they decide to have the family car transported in the van when they move. However, when they entrust their car to Allied Van Lines, they're putting it in experienced hands. Every year, we transport approximately 19,000 automobiles. Our expertise didn't just happen. We've done extensive research and testing to develop the most efficient and the safest possible techniques for transporting automobiles. When a customer requests that we transport his or her vehicle, the planning begins with the sales representative and the customer. Since cars vary a great deal in size, it's important to confirm the year, make, and model of the vehicle that we'll be handling. The sales representative needs to inform the customer of a few pre-move precautions that they should take. For example, they should leave the car with as little fuel as possible. If the car is going from a warm climate to a cold one, the customer should make arrangements to have it winterized. They should be told to remove all of their personal items, such as garage door openers, child safety seats, car phones, CBs, and radar detectors. Exotic and foreign cars may require some type of third-party service to prepare them for transport. Certain types of suspension systems need special servicing before they can be tied down. And some cars may utilize unusual tie-down mounts that we need to know about. The customer, after checking in their owner's manual or with their dealer, can deliver this information to the salesperson who will relay it to the driver. The car should be washed and dried prior to the move to keep the road dirt away from their household possessions and speed the inventory. The sales representative should also tell the customer to run their errands early in the day so the car will be available and the engine is cool when you're ready to load it. The salesperson should offer the customer the option of allowing the driver to load the automobile at the origin agent's warehouse. Arrangements should be made with the customer to deliver the vehicle to the warehouse the day before loading is scheduled. There it can be loaded off the dock at the driver's convenience. If this option is impractical for the customer, then on-site loading should be specified in advance. About 24 hours prior to loading, the driver should contact the customer and confirm the car's loading location. Don't forget to remind him to have the car emptied of all personal belongings, washed, and with as little fuel as possible. If applicable, ask if the car has been winterized. This also is a good time to reinforce the need for getting the errands done early and having the car ready when you are. Just like the household goods, an auto has to be inventoried with every dent, scratch, or any other damage carefully noted. If you miss anything on the front end of the move, it could prove to be costly later. So inspect the car carefully. Start by walking around the car, checking the entire exterior condition. Special things to look for are loose or missing mirrors, loose trim and molding. Give the bumpers a push to make sure they are secure. Look for broken headlights and tail lights. Inspect the grill carefully. See if there are any loose or broken sections. Make sure the antenna is secure. If it's a manual antenna, lower it. Some antennas cannot be lowered, so they have to be removed and put in the car's trunk. See if the car has all four wheel covers and check them for dents or damage. When you finish your exterior inspection, move to the inside of the car to note its condition. Inspect the driver's seat for wear and tear. Cover it with a clean pad or skin before getting in the car. Check the rest of the upholstery, door panels, dash console, and headliner. Look for tears, stains, and wear. 
pays special attention to all seams. The mechanical operation of the car should be checked before loading, so start it up. Make sure the windows operate properly. Look along the edges to be sure the glass isn't cracked or chipped. After checking them, leave the windows partially open so air can circulate. If the car has power door locks, make sure they're in working order. Does the radio work? Lower the antenna. Look at the gas gauge. The amount of gas should be as little as possible. Turn on the heat and air conditioner so you can note if they're working properly. Record the mileage. Now take a close look underneath the car. Look to see that the muffler, tailpipes, and catalytic converter are securely mounted. Note the condition of these parts and check for holes and any road damage. Examine the transmission and oil pans for dents and leaks. Also, check the ground under the car. This is a good time to locate the tie-down holes or decide if you'll have to use axle straps and where to place them. If the car is a convertible, ask the customer to raise and lower the top to check its operation and condition. Since each convertible has its own tricks of operation, don't try to operate this yourself. It's important to take a look under the hood. Check the battery for leaks or corrosion, making sure it's securely attached. See that the radiator cap is on and tight. Inspect for any obvious leaks. When you finish the exterior inspection, take an inventory of the trunk's contents. Now review any damage, scratches, or non-operative accessories with the customer so they are aware of the condition before loading. Before we prepare the van, let's take a look at the loading options available. The first is with a flat floor trailer. Of course, the logical place is right on the floor of your van. The best placement for the car is near the rear door, so it's easier to load and unload and to inspect the vehicle during transit. The second option is a drop frame trailer, where you'll have to build a deck over your wheel boxes. If you have a flat floor trailer, it's only necessary to build decking above the car. But if you have a drop frame trailer, you'll also need to deck below the car. If you need to extend the decking in front of the wheel boxes due to the length of the car, insert cargo bars at the wheel box height. Load under the decking as you extend it. This will give you a flat floor for the car. Allied has examined several techniques for moving automobiles, and research has proven the most effective procedure is the tie-down method. This method requires a combination of both standard and specially designed equipment just for this purpose. You'll be using standard aluminum cargo bars, special nylon tie-down straps, axle straps if needed, mag or glass walkboards, and extensions. Prior to loading, the first thing that must be done is measuring the car so you can properly position the decking. Take the length of the auto and add 12 to 16 inches to act as a safety zone for in front and in back of the vehicle once in the van. Since a car is generally positioned at the back of the van, measure from the back doors forward and mark either the floor or the wall. Then, measure from the ground to the top of the hood and add a 6 to 8 inch safety zone. Now build the deck and load it. Next, measure from the ground to the highest point of the roof and add 6 to 8 inches. Now build and load the roof deck. Measure the car from the front of the front tires to the bumper. Then, using this distance, Allowing 6 to 8 inches for the safety zone, position the bar in the lowest possible logistic hole so the front tires will butt against it when the car is driven into the van. Since there is always the possibility of fluid leaks, place a sheet of cardboard on the floor and tape it in place. 
Getting the ramps ready to drive the car into the van requires extra care and extra precautions. It's critical that the walkboards are aligned correctly so they can be securely pinned to the lip of the trailer. Your trailer should have three holes drilled in each side of the trailer lip, one of which will align with the mounting hole in your walkboard, depending on the width of the car. It's mandatory to have the boards secure to the trailer lip to prevent dislodging as the car is driven up the ramps. Carriage bolts are generally used to keep the boards in place. If your walkboards are not 16-footers, you will require extensions. We're using 14-foot mag boards with a set of 4-foot risers made of 2x12s covered with 3-quarter inch plywood. The boards are attached to the risers using carriage bolts to prevent any movement. Our risers reduce the angle of the car to keep the undercarriage, exhaust system, catalytic converter and bumpers from dragging as the car moves up the ramps. Drive the car up to the risers so you can determine the width of the ramps. Personally inspect all of the preparations before proceeding. With the ramps securely in place, the car can be loaded into the van. Before moving the car, have at least one spotter available to help guide you and to watch for potential problems. The spotter should be visible at all times, positioned on the driver's side of the car where he can clearly see the tires in relation to the ramps and see the undercarriage. Proceed at a slow, steady speed. Do not stop on the ramps. The spotter must help the driver by checking clearance all around and especially noting the underside clearance. Drive the car very slowly into the van until the preset cargo bar stops you. This will keep the car from rolling into the load and ensure that the car is properly positioned in the van. Once the car is in the van, put it in park, shut off the engine, and set the parking brake. If the car has a manual transmission, put it in reverse. Remove the key from the ignition, but leave it in the auto. Safely exit the car, protecting the door from hitting the side of the trailer, being careful not to scratch the finish with your belt buckle or any tools you may have in your pockets. Remember, auto paint is easily damaged. Place a second cargo bar under the end of the frame so it's aligned as close as possible to the auto's tie-down holes. Take note that this cargo bar is inserted upside down. When the tie-down straps are tightened, they will be pulling the bar upward. So, by inserting it upside down, it will remain firmly lodged in the logistic track. Mount this bar as close to the floor as possible, while leaving enough room to slip a strap under it. The tie-down straps are made of a heavy-gauge, woven nylon fabric with a set of specially designed hooks on one end. Generally, these straps have three different shaped hooks, each designed for use in the variously shaped tie-down holes that vary by make and model of car. The hooks are named by their relative shape, so we have the T-hook, the J-hook, and the R-hook. Experience has shown that the R-hook works the best for the oval tie-down hole. Practically every car has special holes for tie-down hooks. They're about an inch in diameter and could be located anywhere along the frame underneath the vehicle. The manufacturer puts the holes in the frame to tie the car down during transport to their dealerships. As you can see, the car suspension provides plenty of bounce and movement that could cause damage during transit. Once the R-hook is installed, it requires a twist to seat it in the hole. It's important to have the hook pointing in the direction that you'll be tightening the strap. Some cars may not have tie-down holes. In this situation, you would use axle straps. 
Position the axle straps either over the axles or around the frame, making sure they won't be damaging any electrical, brake, or mechanical components when tightened. Use the J-hook when ratcheting down. Secure the ratchet portion of the strap to the logistic track and slide the strap through the ratchet center spindle. Check to see that your strap sleeve is positioned on the cargo bar. The sleeve is designed to reduce wear as the strap is tightened against the edge of the bar. The tie-down straps, when tightened using the ratchet, will minimize the movement to ensure the car is transported as safely as possible. With one side of the car secured, repeat the process on the other tie-down. Note the lack of movement once the tie-downs have been tightened. If you are using axle straps over the axle, the car will still bounce, even when secured. While the car's side-to-side -side movement is unlikely, it's still a good idea to place a few pads between the wheels and the walls. Now, cover the auto's trunk with pads to protect it while you build your deck over it. Place your cargo bar allowing a 6 to 8 inch safety zone for extra clearance over the trunk. The next step is to tie down the rear of the car. As you are done in the front of the car, mount a cargo bar upside down for the tie down straps. Repeat ratchet process. When the auto has been tied down in all four corners, it will have minimum bounce left in its suspension, making the car ready for safe and secure shipping. At this point, you are ready to finish building your trunk deck. Remove your pads when you are finished. Never load anything in, on, under, or around the auto. Once on the road, you should continue to take a few precautions with the auto. No matter how confident you are in your loading procedures, it's always a good practice to check the car a couple of times each day while in transit. Let's quickly review the principal steps you need to take when safely transporting an automobile. One, inventory the automobile. Two, measure car dimensions accurately. Three, secure all ramps with pins. Four, allow a 6 to 8 inch safety zone around the car. 5. Ratchet the car at all four corners. 6. Do not load anything in, on, under, or around the car. 7. Check the car frequently. The family car, more than just transportation to the customer, it's their prized possession. And when you follow our carefully researched methods of preparation and loading, you can be sure that it will arrive safely and damage-free.